Hello, Jim. Hello, Jim. How are you doing today? Why are you waiting? I'm feeling like a madman who wants to kill you today! Oh, not today, sunshine! Goodbye, my... Lawnmower? <laughs> oh, I forgot. You can't kill people. Well, good thing there's no law against killing fictional characters! <laughs> and that's where the concept of versus comes into play. Surely you've seen all those kids on the playground where one kid says, My dad could beat up your dad! And then the other kid says, Well, I could beat you up with this crowbar. But eventually, it led to the creation of battleboarding, where instead of wanting to kill other people, there were debates on which fictional characters you wanted to see Die. And nowhere has it been better capitalized on with the YouTube web show known as Death Battle, hosted by Wiz, which is short for Wizard, and Boomstick, which is short for Boomithin Stickerson. And the premise of their show is that it's their job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win in a dead beetle. And they've covered all sorts of franchises such as Mario, Sonic, Star Wars, SpongeBob, Bomberman, Dig. Doug, real people, what? Yet despite this, they haven't exactly covered too many PlayStation characters. Or at least, not ones owned by Sony. And those are the ones we're going to be looking at today. It doesn't have to be Sony versus Sony specifically, or even PlayStation versus PlayStation. And that's exactly like the first one in this video, Kratos versus Spawn. Ah, yes, Kratos. The god of war. Surely the best opponent for him would be one who's killed the actual living god itself. Oh wait, I'm sorry, that's not god. That's my nan. That looks like my nana. Yeah, that's what I said, boom, stupid. Now this is a very early edition of the death battle. So instead of featuring any 3D models or anything remotely resembling Kratos, they decided to replace him with a rotted strawberry. And Spawn looks like a black sausage with a little too much ketchup on it. Educated people pronounce it catsup. <laughs> Kratos doesn't exactly use too many of his weapons, mainly using ones from God of War 3. And Spawn... Spawn just shoots some lasers and has chains seeping out of his skin. Sorry Spawn, but that's not an attack. That's a party trick from my best friend. But then again, Kratos isn't faring much better, because despite getting ready to shoot an arrow at him, he just stands there and lets himself catch fire. God of War? More like God of... Burning alive. Oh, but don't worry about that. Kratos is a big, 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 big boy. And so he leaps out of the fire, attacks Spawn with the blade of Olympus, and then... Die. Hangs himself without a noose. And then comes a post-argument where they argue that the Blade of Olympus is the only weapon that can actually hurt Spawn because it's made in heaven. The Blade of Olympus was made in heaven. Is that true? Hey, God! Oh, what is it, my son? Did you create the Blade of Olympus? No. Well, that was a bummer. I wonder what we should look at next. Long time no see, Caddy! Oh, good gravy gumdrops! Look, everyone! It's my French pen pal, Zebra! I came all the way from France in person just to give you this present! Oh, for me? You should have. I deserve it. Open up the box and see what's inside! Okay, I wonder what could possibly be- <laughs> Hello, I'm Spons! Oh, come on, Spons. This is an April Fool's video. There's no sponsorship here. Ha <laughs> ha! You say that, Daddy Caddy? Please don't call me that. But what if I told you that the niche micro-celebrity YouTuber, Jonathan Frosterthin, has officially opened a YouTube membership page? That's right, guys! This man who looks like a bloody potato, struggling to keep Cthulhu inside of him, actually has a membership program filled with all these cool emotes made by the lovely Liz Beyond Fiverr. Go check her out. And he also has a bunch of exclusive content such as behind the scenes videos, unique transcriptions he makes for other videos that he's uploaded, and so many other videos there's a reason why I said it three times in the same sentence. He can't do anything else. Not to mention that you'll receive unlimited bragging rights in the form of having a cool badge next to your name, and if you pay close attention to some of his videos, you might even win a prize. Go to youtube.com slash Jonathan Frosterton and click the join button which just so happens to be right below this video, next to this video's title. And... You'll be happy, I guess. Oh, by the way, the actual gift is still in the box. Ratchet and Clank versus Jack and Daxter. 
They have this in France. This is the first and sadly only Sony versus Sony death battle ever made. But I'm glad that they did this because if you were there during the PS2 era, this rivalry was everywhere. Constant references to each other in their respective games, rival pairings like in PlayStation Sports and PlayStation All-Stars battle and rattle my ribcage. And eventually in 2016, death battle would do their take on this rivalry themselves. And if I'm being honest, this is a really fun way to start. Even just by the look of this fight, all the polygons everywhere, this pigeon which looks like a fish, and the vibrant colors, it just feels so PS2 and I love it here. And then you realize that they steal ideas from that PlayStation fighting game I just mentioned. I'm very sorry for your loss, Mr. Weasel. Weasel? I'm not a weasel, I'm a Jato Buff! Once they start fighting, it's just such a good time, man. It's nothing too complex or too intricate. It's just all good, clean fun. Ratchet gets to use so many of his weapons, from his turrets, to his guns, to his missile launchers, to his wrench, his freezing abilities, his shields. And Jack gets to use all of his echo and the morph gun to its full extent. He even gets to power up into Dark Jack and Light Jack, even if he gets no sailed by a tin can with lasers on his fingertips. <laughs> And I also just love the dialogue that they have. It's genuinely funny at points. Um, mercy? Um, no. Ah! And then we get to the finale, where the rhino comes in, does his little song and dance, and it's so loud that it removes all sound effects from the remainder of the animation. Get up, Jack! Uh -huh. And there are also some really nice attention to detail, like when Ratchet and Clank are separated, but then as they reach out to the hand of God, they nod at each other, demonstrating their superior teamwork compared to Jack and Daxter. And then the teamwork that they use for the finishing blow, where Clank resists Light Jack's time stop abilities, so that he can block his next attack and then hit him with the freeze ray, and then crush his ice sculpture as they finish off with one more exchange. And <laughs> curtain. <laughs> <laughs> this pleases me. All in all, yeah, this is a really, really cool fight animation. Even if they gave Daxter a vag. Though, speaking of a vag, you know who will never get to see one? Incels. Joker vs. Sweet Tooth. Now, this is the first one featuring a character from the PS1. And out of all the series they could have debuted, they picked the one where the villain is Russell Brand. Criminalized being a bit brown. <laughs> and he's fighting that one villain everyone loves who does the funny laugh. But this fight isn't a fight as much as it's roadkill. Because this fight starts with Joker taking the Batmobile and changing its color so that it looks more like a radish. <laughs> yes, this is the second time they've stolen intro ideas from PlayStation 8 to Stallion's navel. But personally, I think it's done much better here because Joker is more likely to steal someone's ice cream for no reason. Unlike Kratos, who just knocks it out of his hand for no reason. <laughs> How can this happen to me? I've made my mistakes! I'll admit, it is actually kind of fun at first. But then Joker actually gets in the sweet bot with Sweet Tooth, and he's not really fighting him, more just trying to piss him off even more. But unfortunately, Sweet Tooth says, You don't have the driver-themed memory card for your PS1. And then he ends up taking a long time to shoot one of Sweet Tooth's wheels. Come and get it, tough guy. Yeah, come on, Joker. Shoot, shoot it already. already. And then Sweet Tooth transforms the Sweetmobile into a giant orange sorbet ice cream cone. And Joker tells him it's too immature and forces him to listen to Pink Floyd's album, The well, I guess I'll die of laughter today. <laughs> well, that was horrible. Can we go on to something more interesting now? Finally, an episode that has... BREATS! Lara Croft vs. Nathan Drake is another episode featuring rival series. Albeit not quite from the same era, since Tomb Raider was all the way on the PS1 and Uncharted started on the PS3. But both series have often been compared with one another, so it makes sense that you would want them to fight in a dying basement. And yeah, this is a dying basement worth dying for, Nathan Drathen. So the fighting starts, and Lara has him at gunpoint, yet is still patient enough to let Nathan very slowly take his rifle over his shoulder. What's real about me? I don't walk away. But I do arouse you so much that you randomly decide not to shoot me. And then the fight card shows up, they start shooting at one another, and Nathan... <laughs> Nathan starts shooting from behind while walking 
backwards. And he can't seem to find a good shot because he doesn't fire for another 10 years. But eventually, he does start getting some shots in, and Lara does too. So much so that she shoots the Grail herself and blames Nathan. Do you know what you've done? God damn it, you stupid child! Don't you know it's illegal to shoot the neighbor's puppy? But what do you know, the basement starts to collapse. And whereas Nathan is successful in jumping over the cliff, and as for Lara, she had a little too much milk in her cereal, so that's why she's all like... <laughs> But it doesn't matter because she gets on a motorcycle from out of nowhere and catches up with Nathan within a matter of seconds. And this jump scares Nathan so much, his facial hair fell off screen. And then they have another fist fight where Nathan actually loses, causing Laura to taunt him and get so distracted that it destroys the jeep before she can even finish her line. Sorry, have to do what I have to do. Unless if it's kill you, because what do you think this is, a death battle? Well, Nathan clearly missed the memo because he tries to escape in a helicopter and Laura just throws an axe at <laughs> it shatters like glass. And then he survives a fall from the helicopter. Okay, so he's pretty fine. Maybe the fight is going to continue on to some degree. <laughs> well, that was unfortunate. I mean, what else would you expect from a filthy, long, conehead man? How dare you disrespect my people? Well, you showed up faster than I expected. I'm Long Dennis, and in the name of the Long Clan, I will punish you. Oh. Well, what if I like it? By forcing you to play, in one hand I have the next video, and in the other hand, I have the open Wii PNG. But I already have the next video, can you please go? Here we go! I'm not in the mood for this, I'm not playing a game long. Oh no, you guessed wrong! Prepare for the open Wii PNG! Well, aren't we feeling a little... Sonny. Have you had enough, short person? Okay, fine, I'll play that one. Yeah! Jotaro versus Kenshi- This isn't the next video, what are you playing at long? Why don't you skip to the end, you unlong worm? Okay. <gasps> oh my god, it's him on the trailer! It's Gaspanooka and it's Simon! Oh, and they're gonna be fighting each other in Dad's bathtub! I feel like I'm missing something here. Could I now? Oh, that's right! A bonus platform! So you know what that means, kids? It's time for yet another edition of the Kadigura's Bounds Round! <laughs> Okay, so I know that I'm breaking my rules with this one here, but I mean, come on, it's bloody Cash and Simon. Even the death battle episode goes on this whole tangent about how big their rivalry was during the PS1 era. So I mean, I think I can make an exception for this one. And starting with the fight, despite saying that this was going to be the Spyro from the Legend of Spyro trilogy, they're mainly focusing on the classic Spyro from the PS1 days. Oh, well, that's the best Spyro anyway. So we all win in the end. But I mean, at what cost? What do you want? A participation trophy with Crash Bandicoot's dying corpse on it. And here they are, actually fighting for once. And not throwing Molotov cocktails at each other until one of them falls down. <laughs> and this starting scuffle, I mean, sure, it's a little slow. But I love Cash's energy on how he was able to dodge his tail swipe by doing a really big push-up. And the look of the fight in general is so low poly and ps one -y, I love it. I mean, sure, Spyro looks like he could catch fire on any moment. But everything else about the visuals, I really like. And Spyro's voice is just spot on. Fun fact, this guy is voiced by Edward Bosco Sticks. And as for Crash, he only uses voice clips from Crash Twitter Nitty, which makes sense because his model was also ripped from that exact same game too. And I love his little crash dance he does after getting the leg up on Simon. But then he starts taking the fight too seriously and Crash can't seem to land a single hit afterwards. There's this really cool moment where he dashes alongside a mountain and goes for a sneak attack. But then Simon is all like, I see you, and blasts him away. Which leads into this chase sequence, which is reminiscent of the one from the games. I mean, it's a little slower than those chase sequences, but I mean, it just feels very PS1 in general. General. But then he gets on the robot from Wrath of Cortex and I don't like this anymore. Crash Bandicoot starts slowly walking backwards off the edge of a cliff and Spyro freezes him and then bowls right into him so that he falls off. 
but that's okay because finally, Crash is actually able to land some hits. And apparently he's a fan of Street Fighter too. But then Spyro goes into his dark form and he just kind of wins. Even Crash doesn't seem to care despite falling into water. And as we all know, Crash is very proficient in swimming all on his own. So then Spyro just disintegrates him. Crash is dead. And in a way, Spyro is too because Sparks isn't there to take him out of his dark form as Crash steam pressed him earlier. Well, that's a horrifying implication. But does the analysis at least have anything worth mentioning? Crash isn't really dumb. He actually shows many symptoms of autism. Okay, moving on. I only have one video left to talk about, and it was released just last year because it was voted in by fans of Death Battle, and it involves a very special rivalry from over 10 years ago. Aha! Did somebody say 10 years ago? Well, hello there. It is me, the arch nemesis of your local health inspector, Sam Witch. And today, we are cooking a special dish that I have waited 10 years to cook for you. I call it the card souffle. First, what you need to do is take food that has been sitting in your food storage for over 10 years, whether it's 10 year old meat, Hooked vegetables, anything really, and then stick it in the oven. Wait for it to rise. Hello, I'm Sue Flay. I smell of rotten eggs. And voila! Boom! Appetite! Titty. Cole McGrath vs Alex Mercer, a rivalry from the PS3 era that you may or may not have forgotten, but apparently Death Battle fans never did. Certainly not this guy who hosted a campaign to get people to vote for it. This bloke is called Hyper Starman, who looks like one of those people who would do let's plays of visual novels despite never learning how to read. In terms of the animation we did get, well my lumpies and germs, this is actually really, really good. Great even. I mean sure, the models look a bit shit, where Alex Alex looks like he wants to kiss me, and Cole looks like a flesh-toned Astef movie character, and the pre-breakdown analysis <laughs> isn't very good, but in terms of the fight alone, I'd honestly say it's the best one of this video. It's a very interesting dynamic where Cole's abilities get the upper hand, but once Alex gets in for the close quarters, he dominates. And as for the set pieces, you might think it's just in the middle of a city, so it can't be that interesting, can it? Well, you're wrong, because they're literally escalating the fight upwards, running atop of buildings, climbing into various offices, even reaching the rooftop for the climax with a satellite tower. And this shot, my humps. Look at this shot. And then they fall down as a nice moment of taking everything back to where it was. But Cole gets a very nice line of dialogue that perfectly captures his story and of the infamous games in general. This world sure isn't perfect, but it's a lot better without you in it, asshole. Even if it could also be better without your asshole too. And I also love how they work in the various references to their games. Like how they work in Cole's grinding ability by having him skating down Alex's tendrils. Or in that scene with The Office, where the visual style looks more akin to that one cutscene of Alex as a villain in Prototype 2. And on the rooftop, which for context, both of the character recaps start with that iconic Spider-Man quote. With great power comes Grande Nachos. And the conversation they have is literally a nod to the conversation that Spider-Man has with the green going on the rooftop from the first Spider-Man movie. It's just so good, man. So yeah, this is one of the more recent death battles, but I highly recommend you go check this out for yourself. It's just so good. With a very loud duh. But unfortunately, that's all the PlayStation themed death battle episodes and possibly the last one we'll ever get. But you know what? For all the mockery I've done of Death Battle, I can at least say without a shadow of a doubt that they forgot to do Sackboy vs. Knack, so never mind. Rest in peace, Rooster Toaster. Subscribe. <laughs>